Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we shall be looking at another property of bounded self-adjoint linear operators. So we already know that on real line, we have some closed interval whose indices, the lower bound is small m and capital bound is capital M, which contains whole of the spectrum of the given self-adjoint bounded linear operator T. Right, this we already know. Now, here we shall see that how these bounds M, the lower bound M, and the capital bound uh, ca uh, and the upper bound capital M they are connected with the norm of T. So, let's have a look here at this theorem. It says that for any given bounded self adjoint linear operator which is defined on the complex Hilbert space H. We have the norm of T defined as the maximum of the norm of this little m and the norm of this capital M here, right? So this is the relationship between the norm of T and the uh, modulus of the lower bound and the upper bound. Basically, the norm of T is maximum among these two modulus. And if you remember, what is the definition for this norm of T? That is nothing but the supremum of uh, modulus of the inner product of tx with x when whenever the norm of x is equal to 1. The supremum is taken whenever the norm of x is equal to 1. So we have to prove this result here in order to use this result further. So let's first prove this result. So if we have this squats inequality. This squats inequality it says that if we have the supremum of the norm of uh, inner product of tx with x so basically we can uh, write this uh, the absolute value of the inner product of tx with x as the norm of tx multiplied with the norm of x this thing is less than equal to the norm of tx uh, multiplied with the norm of x so we have supremum this thing the first expression and you see the second term is nothing but the norm of t here right so we have obtained if we call the first term in this expression as k so we can call that we can uh, we have this expression that k is less than equal to the norm of t we have this expression here so if uh, and basically in the proof what do we wanted to prove we wanted to prove that this is equal to this supremum of the absolute value of t of x this term this is equal to the norm of T. This is what we wanted to make uh, prove here in this case. So we will in this case prove that k is equal to the norm of t and we already by the squats inequality we have obtained that k is nothing but less than equal to the norm of t. So in order to obtain this equality here we, we shall prove that k is greater than equal to the norm of t. So let's see the proof here. Let's proceed further. So here in the case when t is a zero operator when do we have t as a zero operator whenever we have t z is equal to zero for all z which would have norm one then this operator t would be equal to zero and if this operator t is equal to zero in that case then its norm would also be zero the uh, lower and upper bounds are also zero their maximum would also be zero so all the left hand side and the right hand side everything would be equal to zero hence we would have the proof uh, done in this case so for the sake of generality we let us assume that this tz is not equal to zero whenever we have z which has norm one so in this case we set v as the norm of tz raised to power one by two multiplied with z so this is some number and this is some vector right and we set w as the norm of tz raised to power minus 1 by 2 multiplied by tz this is a vector quantity this is a some scalar quantity right so uh, why we are doing this because we wanted to prove the result through uh, we wanted to prove that this k is greater than or equal to the norm of t so for that we have to make certain calculations so let's see how we proceed in this particular case we have set uh, that this v is nothing but this thing and this w is nothing but this 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 thing so if you take the norm of this v what do you have here the norm of v would be the norm of this thing and the norm of this thing right so because we have considered z 
as a vector whose norm is equal to 1 so therefore the norm of z is equal to 1 so basically this is the norm of v and what is the norm of w here again we take the norm of this quantity and the norm of this quantity separately so again in this case if you see the powers you would have the same norm as that of the norm of v so if any when, when we square the norms we have this expression so let's mark this as equation number one right now we define another variables another vectors y1 and y2 which are uh, written as linear combination of this v and the vector w which we have defined previously so we define y1 as v plus w and we define y2 as v minus w this is our uh, this is what we have defined here okay so what we can do we can uh, calc uh, use all these uh, definitions in order to calculate the inner product of t y1 with y1 and uh, minus the inner product of t y2 with y2 and let's see where do we reach here so what is y1 here if notice our y1 is this v plus w so just substitute in place of y1 as v plus w and v plus w and in place of this y2 as uh, v minus w and v minus w now we just have to perform simple calculations this quantity would be tw plus uh, tv plus tw and uh, here also this quantity would be tv minus tw now how do you open up the inner product of this thing we take the inner product of first with first first with second then uh, second with first and then second with second so this is how you open the inner product mm -hmm. similarly with the second term we have this inner product so you see this uh, the inner product of tw with tw cancels out with this one the inner product of tv with tv cancels out with this one and the, both of these terms they add up to give you two times the inner product of tv with v uh, with w and both of these terms they add up to give you two times the inner product of tw with v right so uh, again we can use the definitions for this v and this w here so we obtain expression in terms of z so in place of this v we are writing the definition for v, uh, this v in place of this w we are writing the definition for w and similarly here the value of w here the value of v so here we have when you solve this thing because uh, this thing is a scalar this could be taken outside the inner product right and moreover this thing is a scalar this could also be taken out of the inner product so we are left with the inner product of t with z uh, tz with tz right this thing and similarly this term being a constant could be taken out and this term being a constant could be taken out of the inner product so we are left with the inner product of t square z the first term and z here right so you see this and this cancels out this and this cancels out so you are left with two times the inner product of tz with tz and here you are left with two, uh, the uh, inner product of t square z with z so uh, because t is given to be self adjoint operator so in this case you can shift this t here without any cross so we would have tz inner product of tz with tz so basically what is this this is the norm square of tz this is also the norm square of tz so we have four times the norm square of tz so this quantity the inner product of dy1 with y1 minus the inner product of dy2 with y2 that is nothing but four times of the inner product uh, uh, four times the norm square of tz so we mark this as equation number two here now again let's see what do we have for every y which is non-zero we are again defining some terms by our own we are defining x as the unit vector y corresponding to the vector y so what is x x is y divided by the norm of y uh, so what would be y y would be x multiplied with the norm of y right so what would be the inner uh, the modulus of the inner product of ty with v so we can write the value of y here what is y y is x into the norm of y so basically this thing this term modulus of the inner product of, of ty with y this is in place of y we could write now x and the norm of y 
and in place of y we can write x the norm of y right now because this is a scalar quantity this could be taken outside this inner product this is also scalar this could also be taken outside this inner product so finally we have uh, norm y square outside then the absolute value of the inner product of the remaining terms that is tx and x right and moreover we also know uh, all these all such quantities of this kind the norm of tx with t no, uh, modulus value that would obviously be less than or equal to its supremum value because supremum is the largest among all right so therefore uh, we have this and remember what we have marked this thing we have in the very starting marked this thing as k this was our k so we have uh, this thing less than equal to y squared norm times k so you have the inner product of ty with y as less than equal to k times the norm of y square so now we can use triangle inequality and again make some simple calculations so we'll be using this result in this calculation so we wanted to calculate the absolute value of the inner product of ty1 with y1 minus the inner product of ty2 with y2 remember we have calculated this thing without the absolute value previously in equation number 2 here okay so we'll be using this thing later on so let's see and concentrate on this calculation first so by using the triangle inequality we could open up this a modulus sign inside the brackets here so this thing would be less than equal to the absolute value of the inner product of ty1 with y1 so basically this norm could now be written as less than equal to the norm of this thing plus the norm of this thing right no issues now using the uh, using the expression here this one what is the norm uh, what is the absolute value of ty with y this thing is less than equal to k the norm square of y so here in this case it would be the k times the norm square of y1 and in the second case it would be k times the norm square of y2 using the expression above and moreover what uh, what is this thing the norm of y1 square plus y2 square let's see and have a look where do we have this expression the norm of y1 square plus y2 square okay we can calculate this thing what is what, what is your y1 your y1 is this thing v plus w so we wanted to calculate the norm of y1 right so it would be the norm of v plus w so uh, basically we wanted to calculate this thing so it would be written as the inner product of v plus w and the inner product of v plus w so we can calculate this v plus the uh, the inner it would be the inner product of v with v plus the inner product of v with w plus the inner product of w with v plus the inner product of w with w right so you would have the uh, v square norm plus the norm of w square plus two times not two times uh, these two terms as such right similarly you would calculate the uh, norm 2 square of y2 so it would be the inner product of v minus w v minus w so this thing would be the inner product of v with v and then uh, the uh, minus the inner product of v with w then minus the inner product of w with v and then the plus uh, inner product of w with w so basically this and this term would cancel with this and this term when you add up both of the the them so you finally you would have two times of um, so just a second so when you add both of this y1 square norm and y2 uh, y2 norm square when you add up both of the, them this term and this term cancels out with this term and this term here not this and this the inner product of v with w would cancel out with this term the inner product of w with v would cancel out with this term okay 
and you are left with the inner product two times the inner product of v with b and we are left with so it would be let me write down here so we would have when we wanted to add up the these two norms so we would have two times the inner product of v with v plus the inner product of w with w right and what is this this is norm v square and this is norm w square so we have this thing here so let's go back to our expression so this thing the norm of y1 square uh, norm of y1 squared plus norm of y2 square that is equal to two times the norm of w square plus the norm of v square and if you remember what is uh, what are their norms the norm of v square let's see here it is equal to the norm of tz the norm of w square that is also equal to the norm of tz therefore we have this expression here it would be four times uh, so it would be 4k the norm of tz here right so let's mark this as equation 3 now we can compare our equation number 3 here this quantity is less than equal to 4k times the norm of tz and we can compare equation 2 equation 2 tells us that uh, this thing is equal to this thing so basically when you take the absolute value here this would be the absolute value of this thing so finally when you compare you have 4 norm of tz square that is less than equal to 4k times the norm of tz now because we have considered our tz to be a non-zero quantity therefore we could cancel out one term here and we can cancel out this 4 so finally we have the norm of tz less than equal to k right and moreover if we take the supremum over all z which would have norm 1 so this thing would uh, when uh, when you take the supremum of all these quantities whenever the norm of z is equal to 1 so by definition this is the norm of t so this thing is less than equal to k there would be no effect on k because uh, k would was a constant quantity right because we have considered k to be already the supremum of the norm of x taken over this quantity okay not a scalar quantity so we finally have norm of t less than equal to k and initially we had norm of t greater than equal to k so when you combine both of these cases you have norm of t equal to the norm of k so this is what we wanted to prove here in this result. So I hope you understood this result well. Well, that is it for this video. Thank you for watching.